looking good. Keep it up. I celebrate a lot of my successes on this channel, and rightly so. I mean, people love to know what works, but not everything is beer and Skittles. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and I don't know what Skittles are, but in this video, I'm gonna give you eight garden products that I totally wasted my money on. Let's get into it. My wife reckons I've wasted our money on more than eight. So if this video does well, we might have to make a sequel. Number one, cheap whippersnipper. No, this isn't it. The one I'm talking about is the Bormer. All in one whippersnipper brush cutter. Should be called the Bummer. I got it off eBay and it came with a bonus safety pack which was really insulting because it looked like they were designed as replicas for a six year old's toy set. Hey dad, I look just like you. My Bormer whippersnipper worked okay to begin with and it did have plenty of power. but it was so heavy, you needed arms like Hulk Hogan to lift it. Lucky for me, I do. And apart from the weight, it was cheaply made, a bugger to start, and broke down on my second use. I think you can still pick them up for about 160 bucks on eBay Australia, or you could just go to the dump and dig around, you might find mine. I paid a whopping $329 a few years back. Anyway, I lashed out and got myself a still, and it still works like a champ. I've got a full review on my website, links below, if you want more info on the Bormer multi-tool, but take it from me, only one will just frustrate the hell out of you. Two, plastic covered greenhouse. Yeah, it's in the name really, isn't it? Of course, plastic coverings don't last in the subtropics. This was such a good deal that I got conned twice. I mean, they're really cheap and that's probably why they don't last very long and also why I had to recover ours just to get a bit longer life out of them. Yeah, you can buy the aftermarket plastic replacement covers but I decided to cover ours in shade cloth, that one black, that one white, because it lasts longer than one season. As you can see, I'm not using them much now anyway. They're more like storage areas. But if I did decide to buy another greenhouse, I would lash out and get one with a stronger panel or cover and made from alloy so it wouldn't rust as easily. Number three, slide together raised garden beds. Too good to be true? Put together in five minutes? Yeah, right. Took me at least 40 minutes to put it together and then about that long for it to fall apart again. The plastic posts should have been a warning sign, but the old UV safe clouded my judgment. Great idea, poor design. The posts should be alloy and the lugs or grooves much bigger so it can't easily bust apart. I should have just got a birdie's garden bed or made my own rather than falling for the too good to be true cheap fast and nasty option. Four fabric or paper fruit protection bags. This isn't one of them, it's one of the good guys. But do you know the saying, couldn't fight your way out of a wet paper bag? Well, you try keeping a possum out of ripping into a wet, lightweight fabric bag covering a juicy mango like this one. No chance. Those types of bags, and also the paper bags, might be good for the environment, but as soon as it rains or the sun hits them, they disintegrate. However, these stronger nylon bags with this big juicy mango inside of it, or my homemade ones made out of nylon fly screen are a better option. Even if the flying foxes do manage to suck the fruit through the strong mesh, they simply don't have time to suck them all. But those soft fabric or paper bags really do suck. And I've said suck too many times. 
Number five is a plant, brew kale. Again, it seemed like a good idea at the time. A cross between kale and Brussels sprouts, and for a few months, all was going well. The brew kale plants grew and they grew and they kept on growing, but they never produced little brew kale heads like they were supposed to. That was two years ago and I still have them in the garden, but in the end, the problem is that our cooler season isn't cold enough for long enough for the plants to crop. So they get close and then it gets too hot again and they die back. The ironic thing about it is I don't even like Brussels sprouts. Number six, solar water pump, AKA irrigator or water wand. I got this back in 2015 for around $180 and just over 12 months out of warranty, of course, it failed. So I wrote an email to the business owner and seller only to be told that this is to be expected and they recommend you buy a replacement pump and battery kit every 12 to 18 months. How much is a replacement kit, you ask? $40. Yes, that's right. You're supposed to fork out 40 bucks every 12 months just to keep this product running. Now that wasn't written on the packet, was it? I left this unit on top of our water tank as a reminder of what an idiot I was. It's a real shame because I found this product very useful when it worked. As a set and forget mini drip irrigation system, able to pump water from any tank, container, or even a bucket, I would have been happy if I got five years use out of it. I probably would have even been happy enough to purchase another one if it lasted, say, another five years. But I'm not gonna waste money on a product that I have to keep propping up every 12 months. However, I have noticed another similar product on eBay for a much lower price and seemingly more features. So I'm considering buying one to check it out. I'm a glutton for punishment, aren't I? Seven is Amgro Wetter Soil Professional. Speaking about cheap stuff, this isn't. At 27 bucks per 10 kilos, I purchased this several years ago and kept the bucket to see if this product would help to slow down evaporation of the soil in our potted plants, especially through summer as they can dry out so quickly. Wetter Soil Professional Soil Wetter Granular is an easy to use wetting agent for gardens, lawns and potted plants. Each granule is impregnated with a concentrated low toxicity wetting agent. Low toxicity? Not no toxicity, not organic. Ugh. Truthfully, I never noticed any significant difference in water retention or penetration. A smarter way would be to dig in some compost or manure for a better result. Yes, you guessed it, Amgro Wetter Soil Professional is about as useful as lips on a chicken. Hopefully I'll get some use out of the bucket though. Another thing that's been gathering dust in the shed is this little fella, number eight electric shredder. The selling points for this was quiet operation. Does palm fronds, small ones obviously, and doesn't use fossil fuels. At the time, I used to hire a chipper when I wanted, but I still needed something to do the smaller jobs around the garden. And because it had okay reviews, I dropped 300 bucks on it. In reality, instead of shredding, it kind of crushes. And it's not very portable unless you have a long extension cord. And of course, anything more than about an inch wide, and you've got some drama fitting it through there. Lucky for me, I now have this beast. Thanks to Hansa. Now, if I had my time over again and I couldn't afford a machine like this, what I would or should have done was grab one of the models below this because it still would have been a heaps better than old Crusher here. At the end of the day, a shredder or a chipper is supposed to do just that, shred and chip things apart like a crazy, hungry, wild animal looking for a feed. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a dodgy thumbs up. Share the video around and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Should put that in there. Thank <laughs> you.